First, we'd like to ask uh, how you met my Zetterling and describe the circumstances. Well, I went to a theater school where my already was at Kalifliger Theater School, and she was already working in a theater in Stockholm. But when I came up to see Kalle Flieger, and I was 14 years old, and Mai was 16, he, she was working with the scene. Uh, so Kalle introduced me and said, please come and have a look at this. So I looked at Mai and another girl who worked, and I thought Mai was marvelous. Uh, yes, I really admired her from the very first sight. And then we came from the same kind of social surroundings, I would say. And, that, and she had no relatives. I mean, she had no relatives, of course, but she had no sisters and brothers. She was a lonely child, and so was I, living with my mother. And so we found that we had found a sister in each other. And uh, I think we both had... Uh, Yes, a longing to educate ourselves. We felt, we felt that, that lack of education in the surroundings, in the schools. We had gone just only to ordinary schools. And then I wanted to study languages and literature. And Mai and I, we, we read a lot together. And we, uh, we read Strindberg, for instance. And we read Shakespeare, and we read Ibsen, and we started to listen to classical music together, which none of us were familiar with before. And we read also, there was an English author called June Grant, who wrote about other lives, previous lives. And we were very fascinated by June Grant's books. One was called, I was the Queen of Egypt, I was Carla, in some, in some life she had been Indian. And we thought, Mai and I, that we had met in previous lives. That's why we felt that very close sisterhood. Do you say sisterhood in English? Yes. Sisterskap, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, we were quite a lot up in the blue, in, I would say, in a way. We were very romantic. In my head, a lot of sexual experience that I didn't have. I was very innocent. But she, she didn't speak much about that, really. But then she had a very strong, what can I say, light experience. She's written about that in, in the book. Yes, we've read that. Yes. Can you describe it again? Yeah. Us? We were uh, quite a lot. We were, I don't know what you call that in English. You know, you put the hands over a glass and it goes from bookstore to bookstore. What's that? Letter to letter. From yeah. letter to letter and they create words. The spirit, people, they, they work with this quite a lot. And we did. In my was fantastic when she just touched it. You know, you put the glass in the middle. And then there are letters all over the place. And uh, one put the hands and, you, and the glass goes from letters to letters. What is it now? Ouija? Seance. Seance. What? We call it a seance. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, and she would get answers. Yes. Soon I put the hands on the glass. It started running quickly <laughs> around the letters and created uh, lines. Lines like uh, it was kind of biblical, kind of I am an old, we ask who are you? I am an old soul, it was called. And you are among the heavens creature. I mean it was kind of a lot about love and how to behave in life. But my had a kind of, what you say, medial uh, talent. Medium talent. Oh, yes. The yeah, talent of a talent. medium. Yes, yes. Extrasensory. Yeah. And I think 
It was clairvoyance what? is another what? word. Clairvoyance. Exactly. Yes. She had something like that. And I think it might be one of those nights when we had been doing this. It was at my home. I still remember Maya's face. It's fantastic after all those years. She had a kind of light experience. And her face changed. And she was looking behind us seeing something that we didn't see. But I watched her face and it changed. And that was a very important experience for her. And she said afterwards that I felt like all the evil was gone away from me. Well, she's written about this. In her yes. Book. Do you think? Do you think? Then this. Do you think that this quality and this uh, talent is something that she remained close to all of her life? Yes. Say, yes. Yes. Can you give us a, another example or two? Well, in the end of her life, in the end of her life, when she had cancer, she believed a bit too much, perhaps, in what healers could do and that kind of thing. And she was a contacted medium, I know. And I thought she had such a great potential in her... She had the spirit power, some spiritual. So I was somehow surprised when she died, <laughs> because I thought she had such a strong belief in things. But I am a quite naive person, I must say, too. Perhaps they needed her. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what she told when she, she was to die, that I got so much to do at the other side. So she was a believer that life would continue somehow, I think. She did believe that. Yeah. Do you think if she had not become an actor, she may have become a priest? A, or a, a priest? <laughs> or some kind of religious... Yes, could be. Yeah. It could have been, yeah. But she had such a belief also that she had something important to say and bring to this world. And she was an optimistic person, and I was quite pessimistic about the world, about everything. And we had some fights about that. Our view on life, I'm much more negative and she was more positive. And she enjoyed life, really. Would we you don't. say she was, you were cautious and she was less cautious? What is cautious? Seker, you skrela vil vil vara seker, och hon brydde sig inte om om hon kände sig osäkert, eller var hon modig? Ja, hon var modig, yeah. absolut. She was det. courageous then. Yes, I would say so. And she had such a strong belief that she had something to tell the world. How wonderful. I haven't got that. But she had really. That her work was important, that she had something to tell. That was the strength, really. Mm -hmm. And so, do you have a opinion about how she felt about being somewhat a woman without a country or a more internationally based person rather than someone with a national identity? I don't know really, because it switched. I mean, she went from Sweden when she was so young. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But she came back to me. Movie, still. Yes, but she, and then she was very critical to Sweden in one of her films. It wasn't a movie, it was no. like a, a cut. Document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They interviewed her, she was so negative to Sweden. Aha, uh -huh. so you're saying when she had publicity here in Sweden, yes. she was outspokenly negative? Yeah, I think so. Was she? Yeah. Okay. And yet they... She, I think she was wrong in many ways there. Uh -huh.
No, I think really that her, uh, she spent too much money. They were afraid that the last thing she was going to do here when I was going, I was very much involved in that story. It was such a good, on a good book written by uh, 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 a woman who's been a, what do you say? Woman, clean, 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 a cleaning woman. Rapport from yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And that was such a good story. And I was to play the lead in there, but nothing came out of that. So yeah. yeah, I've written about that. Aha, uh -huh, good. But uh, no, I mean, that sh it, it was supposed to be a low budget, you say, film. But then her fantasy started, <laughs> and she, I mean, she made it too. It was too much. It was going to be too expensive. That's why. That's why. And I told her this is going to be. And, and they can't afford this. But you know, her imagination. She had to tell and so on. I think it was econo economical reasons here. Really. She could have done that if she wasn't... Uh... Extravagant. Yes, exactly, exactly, exactly. Mm. Uh -huh. And she... Um, she had... The, do you th what was the origin of this extravagance? Just who she was as a person? Or did she have other filmmakers who she admired? Uh, was she trying to imitate anyone, or was she completely original, and, and that was just part of her originality? Original she was, of course, but she admired Fellini a lot. Did she? He, oh, yes, very much so. Very much so. But, I mean, the political background, it, it, it's her background, it's my background. The way we were brought up, I think. So then, but then when she came to England, she met Herbert Long. Yeah. You heard him? Yes. And he was a communist. And uh -huh. he had a, a big, uh, what you say, made a big impression on her thinking. I could see that. Uh huh. And that was about three or four years, right? That was in the big middle of 50s. And they were together for. I don't know. Years, I, think. Yeah. I had many love stories, and Did you? they were not resting for such a long time. But they were very strong and passionate. Why they lasted, I must say. And Herbert Long was one of them. I don't remember how, how long time they kept together. She okay. tells the story of a great actress called Valkyrie. 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 I don't understand what you mean. She tells the story of working at the Dramaten. Yes. And there was an actress, an actor there, a woman, uh, named Valkyrie. Okay. I have no idea. Okay. I was wondering who it was. Valkyrie. I thought maybe... I have no idea. The great Valkyrie, she writes in her book. Uh, Everyone admired her, and she was a... Ah, Gunnel Broström could have been. Heter hon... Gunnel Broström. Aha, uh -huh, okay. I, I don't know. Uh, for example, she talks about Alf Sjöström. Mm -hmm. ah, Sjöberg. Sjöberg. Ah, Sjöberg. Yes, he was an important director for her, I think. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he saw very early her talent and gave her very good parts. Did she, she writes in her book that she got all the good parts, is that true? She got really good parts, yeah. And but she was very talented as an actress. I she think. was. Yeah. But, she was. so the other girls also got parts. What? You didn't feel uh, that she dominated all the parts. I don't know, because I, I didn't work at Ramorton at that time, so I, I, I didn't feel that at all. I uh, don't know what the other thoughts, I don't know. Yeah, you were not working there at that time? No. Mm -hmm. You were there for a, court, a few years, or how did that go? After my, after since I've been retired, I've been working also at Ramorton, but not before, really. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. You were just in the school no. with her? What do you mean, just in the school? I thought you you didn't you weren't in the national school with Mai. It was not the national school. It was only in Kalifliga. Only the Kalifliga school. school. And uh -huh. then she went to the Dramata. But we kept together. Our friendship lasted. Uh -huh. 
I see. But we, we didn't work together or right. something, no. And did you visit her in England while she of was there? Of course I did. A lot? Okay. A lot. And she visited me and lived at my place when she was here, and I lived at her place when I came to, to England and then to France, so we kept. But we became also critical to each other for a period, I remember. So it had its ups and downs. And, but, uh, and the cause of that? What was the cause of that? The well, I thought, well, my is not the only director, but the directors are quite envy of each other sometimes, and that irritates me. <laughs> because, I, I mean, I, I had friends who were directors, so she was so negative, and so we had some quarrels about things like that. I see. So she was, yeah, okay. You think she was competitive with other yeah, yeah, but they they are, I think, directors more than 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 actresses. I think. Yeah. Ah uh, well. But she's not alone there. Yeah. Mm. No, indeed. No, <laughs> no indeed. <laughs> and she had some competition with Ingmar Bergman. Yes, if that there was a competition, I don't know. Yeah. She has these themes, her, her main themes, one of them being, of course, love, and another being madness, sin is with them. Yeah. She, yeah, I don't, we talked about that once, and she, she had seen me, and I had a very, very good part in the Lars Norén play, and then after that we discussed that, and said, don't, don't you ever feel that, that it's, you can be close to madness? when you go into a part of that kind. But I haven't felt that, but I think she had felt that, that might, it could be touching something. I don't know. But I mean, then she went over to be director. So... And why did she... But as an actress, she had felt the closeness of... Uh, of madness. I, mm -hmm. I guess so. That's why she asked. Right. And uh, why did she decide to become a director? I think she wanted to be the one who decided things herself, mm -hmm. which you don't do as an actor. Right. And you are picked as an actor. A horse that you can do with that, and that. But as a director, you decide. And at the time, did you think uh, this was perfectly normal for her to decide to become a director? Well, I was, uh, I was uh, surprised the first time, and then could I say, yes, I see the point, I see the point. So if, if you want to have, want to say something, it's a better chance, I mean, if you're a director and an actor, I mean, you're, as an actor, you are so de dependent on the good script to start with. And she, she also could pick a script or work the script out or something, and so she was the one who decided. And she wrote some of the scripts herself. Yeah, and she had great help of David. He I mean, she wrote the script about uh, Amorosa, about uh, that uh, author. Agnes von Kruse. Yeah, exactly. And... Uh, Yes, she was writing, and she she was one that picked up what she thought was important to tell about her life, and so on. So. Right. Mm. Yes, Ag her interest in Agnes von Krusenscherner was this uh, uh, something you had also read as a girl. Yes, but I wasn't so impressed as Mai was, perhaps. I think also perhaps Mai was interested in the queer. What do you think? You know, the sexuality. That is, to Toy. say fluently, it could be bisexuality. I think she right. was interesting. In. That that interested you. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Okay. And that's a big theme in Agnes von Kruse. Yes, it is. Obviously. It is. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, many pages that she kept about nuclear waste. Mm -hmm. Later in life, she, this was something she apparently was saving articles and pictures, newspaper articles about nuclear waste being shipped around the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the environment and go ahead. 
Were you familiar with this theme? Well, of course. I mean, she was interested in people and how people lived and their surroundings. I mean, in nature, she was very interested. I mean, going to Iceland and up there, how lived people up in Lapland and, and the gypsies, how did they live, how did they think. It's an interesting in, in human beings, the way we behave. And but she was so interested in... in uh, talked about her a minute ago, Simone de Beauvoir. Yes. 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 And she wanted to make a film, I don't know, about her, about her work. Yes. The other women, perhaps. It was a television yeah. series, seven parts, I think. Yeah. Yes. And she had read, uh, some, she seems to have been very widely read, has read yes. many. Yeah. Yes, she read a lot. And she did that. Yes, she did. But not as a young... Uh, beginning with you, yes, with your friendship. Yes, no, we didn't feministic literature, no. No, not from the very beginning, no, we didn't. No, but you, but she got, she also was interested in a lot of Swedish authors. C. J. L. Ankvist, Lore yes, Ankvist. Yes, yes, she wrote a fantastic script about his life that was going. She didn't get the money for that. It was such a good script, I think, mm. uh, about Anquist. Yeah? And it was a biography of him? Yeah, in a kind of, kind of. And it was so in interesting, but it was, would be quite expensive, too. That's why it didn't get through, I think. But that was a shame. She had very good ideas and good views that never came to to be produced. We've seen a lot of these files at the mm -hmm. Svenska Film Institute. Yeah. Many and in fact she had two or three scripts about Amkvist. Oh really? Yeah. Could be. She rewrote them. I wrote, I read one of them and I liked very much. But she had no opportunity to make them. So you were going to be the lead in Rapport von Skirhink. Yeah. So, uh, Hink, yeah, that, that you were was, going to be the... Yes, that was the idea. I've written about that. That was... Well, you were going to play Maya Ekelöf. Yeah, right. What? Ekelöf. Yeah. Ek Maya Ekelöf. Ekelöf, yeah. 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 yeah.